Okay, now we go to this passage. This is, uh, this is a message of warning, a warning message, okay? So don't think that when I talk about grace, I don't talk about warning. I have warning, but I don't make the warning the most important part of my message. I don't just motiv motivate, I don't just motivate people with warning. Okay, this passage, these three passages, and all the churches shall know that I, Jesus, is the one He who searches the minds and hearts, and I will give to each one of you according to your works. That all the churches should know that I, Jesus, is the one who searches the mind and hearts. He searches our mind and our heart. He knows our heart. He will search our heart and look for what is inside us. He will look for what is inside us and see if we are a good Christian or not a good Christian. Are we a sincere Christian or a false Christian? And I will give to each one of you according to your works. So if we are a sincere Christian, He will give us good things. But if people are false Christians, the hypocritical, hypocritical Christians, then God will discipline and punish them. And Luke 12 too, For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. So here is everything that is covered will be revealed. There is nothing covered that will not be revealed. Everything will be revealed. Not only in the day of judgment, but also in this lifetime, God will reveal the secret sins of people when they don't repent. Nor hidden, that will not be known. Things that are hidden will be known. And then 1 Corinthians 4, 9, For I think that God has displayed us, the apostles, last, as men condemned to death. For we have been made a spectacle to the world, both to angels and to, the, and to men. Now here, Paul talks about a situation. God has displayed us, the apostles, as men condemned to death. Now this is just a, 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 uh, a comparison. A, uh, it's uh, saying that it's, it's like people condemned to death, they, are, they have to stand in front of people. They have to be displayed to the, to the people. When people are condemned, they, uh, people are put to death, they are put to death in the public. So people can see what happens to the people who committed serious crime. So the apostles will be like the people who are condemned to death. That will become a spectacle to the world. That the whole world will see us, both to angels and to men. Now, the angels will be visible to the angels. I uh, mean, the apostles will be uh, a spectacle to the angels and to men. Now, this would be the judgment time. Uh, to men, because men don't see all our problems, except on the judgment day. Then all our things will be revealed. So the apostle uh, Paul said that his life will be a spectacle to the whole world, to all the angels and to all the men. Now I will apply this and say, if Paul has to stand in front of all the people, to all the angels and all the men as a spectacle, will we other Christians also be a spectacle to the whole world, to the angels and to the men. In a judgment day, will only be the will only the apostles be revealed, and not the ordinary Christians. I think Paul is just saying we would be like the most important spectacle to the whole world. The whole world will watch us, but every Christians will also be uh, standing in front of all the angels and all the people. So this tells us that every single Christian, what we do, what we think, how we talk, how we behave, how we, how we uh, have motivation, what are um, real motivation, all these will be revealed one day. And now God sees that all already. The angels see us all already. And uh, one day, but all the men also will see, all the people will see our life and see what kind of Christians we are. So these three Bible verses are warning Bible passages. 
But then there is grace. Sometimes the grace is hidden. Sometimes,、uh, you know, we, we, so I'm going to show you how to discover the grace in these、uh, three passages, okay? Now, the interpretation、uh, in the first passage, Jesus sees every detail in our mind and hearts, and he will reward each one according to our works. Now, this is grace here, he will reward. Now, the see, seeing part, Jesus sees us. It has a grace part and a law part. The grace part is he sees our good things, he sees our good acts. The law part is he will see our sins. He will see our sins. So when he sees our heart, that is the good part. He will see what we've done for him. There is a warning part that he will see our sins also. And then Luke 12, too, everything hidden in our mind will be revealed. There is no secret in God. We cannot hide anything from God. So, if we have any hidden sin, if people have lust, they look at women and they have lust, or they have anger towards someone, God sees us already now. And one day it will be revealed to the whole world. And then, 1 Corinthians 4 9, Paul's life will be a display to all the angels and the men when every Man can see his life, it must be the final judgment because only the final judgment that every man can see his life. If Paul's life will be displayed to everyone, our lives will also be displayed to everyone. Our life will be displayed to everyone. That means our daily thoughts and actions will be seen by everyone at judgment. So, everyone, everything we do, okay? Negative and positive examples of people. Quite a number of Christians are not aware that every thought and action will be exposed to the whole world and to God. So many Christians don't give a second thought when they sin. So many Christians don't think about that their thoughts and their words and their action will be exposed to the whole world. They don't think about that. So they, they live in a foolish way because God sees their life and God is not happy with their life. And then on the other hand, there are Christians who know that every moment of their lives are exposed to God, so, that, so they are very careful about every, their thoughts, words, and deeds. So there are Christians who realize that their life is exposed to God, so they're very careful how to talk, how to think, how to feel, how to act. So I hope we are like that, that we really understand that we are words and action with all. All be exposed. God's nature and grace. God give us salvation and give us、uh, the Holy Spirit to remind us. Okay, now His nature first is He is a holy God. Okay, I, I did not write down here. He is a holy God. He's an all knowing God. He knows everything, He knows our thoughts. So these are His nature. He's a、uh, Holy God, and He hates sin, and He is delighted with our goodness. Whatever we do good, He is very happy. So, these are His nature. Okay? And then His grace. God g i v e us salvation and g i v e us the Holy Spirit to remind us. So, this is grace. John 16 8. And when He has come, the Holy Spirit comes. He will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. The Holy Spirit rene renews us and moves us with His loving, gentle voice. So, now this is grace that He will move us to repentance. He continues to speak to us. Now, even though the three passages, it seems that there is not obvious grace, but for us to respond to that, we must have the voice of the Holy Spirit. When we look at these this passages here, that He will stretch our heart. So he'll,、uh, the, the, the grace here, He will reward us. And、uh, also, He will move in our heart so that we'll obey Him. Now, Luke 12, too, what is the hidden grace? There's no grace here, but there's hidden.、Uh, the hidden grace is that anything that we do for God that is covered will be revealed. That everyone will see. And also, 
God searches for good things in our life. And when, when He sees something good, He's very happy. And then 1 Corinthians 4, 9, that He will make a spectacle to the world that He strengthens us so that our life will be a good witness of Jesus. He will strengthen us so that we are worthy of this judgment. On the judgment day, our goodness will be exposed to the whole world. That is the grace. So you have to get used to thinking about God's grace. What God has to do in order that we can obey Him according to this verse. So that's how you think, okay? Let, let me say again. When you don't know how to talk about God's grace, you think about what nature God has and what does He do in order to help us obey Him. Okay? Now here, Revelation 2, 30, 23, He will work in our heart so that when He searches our heart, it, He can see a pure and holy and loving heart. So He'll work in our hearts. That is His grace. You know, God doesn't just tell us to do something. He will make us, He give us strength, motivate us to follow Him. He did not just leave us to the world and say, I give you the Bible, you just obey me. He doesn't do that. He will move in our heart to motivate us and give us strength, give us joy so that we can obey Him. So that is something for you to remember, how to talk about God's grace. Many people uh, have problem writing about God's grace because they, they, they just not, they're not used to it. But if we think of how can, why do I love God? I love God because God moves in my heart that I see God's goodness. He gives me love so that I can love God. And I count His blessings, therefore I love God. So everything we do, why do we preach the gospel? Because God gives us the more the compa compassion for people. He moves in our heart and gives us that quality. Okay, there is nothing covered that will not be revealed. So, how can Christians live out a life that there will be something good, there will be a lot of good things hidden, and they will be revealed because God moves in our heart so that we'll obey Him. Okay, and then we'll be a spectacle to the world to the angels, because He has moved in our heart so that we live a holy life, a loving life, and then one day uh, that will be exposed to the whole world and we'll be very, very happy. We'll be very, very happy. We'll say, God, I thank you for working in my life so that I love people, and now my love for people will be exposed to the whole world and you reward me and I thank God, you are so gracious. Now think about the Day of Judgment. I hope you are, we are all happy. We say, one day, God will show to the whole world what I've done for Him. That He has changed my heart. He has worked in my heart so that I can obey Him. And then one day, that will be exposed to the whole world and the whole world will see it. Okay? So God's nature... Uh, uh, he give us the Holy Spirit, He give us salvation to work in our heart to remind us. And then when He find that we love God, He will prepare for us things we cannot imagine. And then why many Christians quench the Holy Spirit? Because they saw some unfaithful Christians and they think it's okay to sin and ask for forgiveness later. So they think that it's okay because there are some Christians who disobey. And after they sin for a number of times, they, their conscience becomes numb because many Christians, they continue to sin and then the conscience becomes numb. They don't feel the move of the Holy Spirit anymore. And it will be very dangerous. If we totally lose the move of the Holy Spirit, that means the person has lost the relationship with God already. So it's very important that we be very careful. See, they also find excuses for themselves. We are too poor and we have to sustain our churches, so I have to lie to get money. So sometimes people give excuses for lying. 
because they say our church is too poor so do we have to lie to someone to get money so never never do that because when God is unhappy with us the worst will happen to us my wife nags me too much so I have to find another woman to comfort me so that's an excuse the way to solve that is to be kind to the wife and listen to the wife and discuss with the wife how to have a good relationship instead of finding another woman to comfort us or they may enjoy looking at beautiful women so there are different excuses that people quench the Holy Spirit and reminder and warning from God's law when we hear news of someone important being caught committing crimes we feel sorry for that person we will say why did he do something like that he can apply that to us we can apply it to ourselves have you heard of presidents or pastors uh, TV evangelists that they have been exposed of their sins and uh, for instance the American president Nixon Richard Nixon he was caught and he he was the only president who had to resign so that was a really big shame on his life and and he felt very very bad but I heard that he became a Christian I you know I'm not sure about the detail but that was really when he was caught it was really really a shame on him and he would really hide himself from other people and he would feel very shameful about himself at that time and uh, so when we hear someone important they they are found that people find out that they have done something wrong then they will say oh I don't want that to happen to me so not one thought no one word no one action will escape God's eyes most importantly he will see our motives if we have wrong motives for instance for example when we just want to glorify ourselves when we try to bring people to Christ or pray for someone God is not happy so when we pray for someone some people will push people to push them fall down now that is terrible why push them why push them so that people say wow you are powerful but actually people can see that already when people push people people can see that other people can see that the person being pushed can feel that it's not for the glory is for shame so I hope that we don't do that we we don't serve God to show people we don't have to show people how powerful we are we want to serve God honestly okay so this is a warning that when they do that God doesn't like that and God will give to us in this life and in eternity according to our works sin will bring pain so when a person continues sin it will bring pain it will bring suffering and also shame and the worst scenario if a person continues sin without repentance he can lose salvation and the moment he goes into hell he will say wow I had a chance to go to heaven I taught salvation but I myself sin and then fall into hell so that's terrible so I hope none of us will go into hell so we can have this warning I'm not saying we cannot have warning but the warning should not be the main part the main part is the grace is that God moves in a moves in a heart so that we obey him and then he will see how we obey him and he will reward us accordingly so that is wonderful news God doesn't just leave us to obey him he will move in our heart he give us strength he give us motivation and he will help us he will have other Christians and pastors to help us to love and obey him so God does everything he can to help us obey him so this is the grace and he will reward us and this this is the warning nothing can hide from God and uh, so he will give to us in his life and eternity according to our works and sin will bring pain and suffering and the worst scenario is eternal damnation and our lives will be displayed before everyone can you think of every act of our of ours exposed before everyone so one day whatever we do will be exposed to the whole world so we can say Lord please cover my shame forgive me and I want to change from now on I want to change from now on I'm sorry for my sins I'm really sorry for my sins please forgive me so I hope that we all would be like that and say God if every act think of the worst act that we have it will be exposed to the whole world how 
terrible it is. So we say, Lord, please cover my shame and forgive me and help me to change so that from now on you can say, wow, from now on you're a totally different person. So how to be careful of all our actions? In every moment of our lives, think of our ceiling being removed. You know, think of the ceiling. There's no ceiling. And God and, and angels and all the people are watching our lives as in the final judgment. How will we live our lives in such uh, mentality? So this mentality that the roof is open or the walls are removed and people around us can see and hear us. So how will we behave when people can see our whole life? And it's the fact that they can see us one day and God can see us now. So remind ourselves that every godly thought, word and action are rewarded by God. So everything we do for God, God is very happy. And remind ourselves that every sinful thought, every word and action will bring destruction to us. So if we have sinful thoughts, it will bring destruction. And repent and turn away from all our sins, thanking God for forgiving all our sins. So we thank God, wow, He forgives me. I want to turn away from all my sins and count God's blessing and deeply appreciate Him and want to please Him with our thoughts and words and deeds. So we want to praise God and count God's blessing and thank God for all the work and I want to obey Him. Okay? Challenge. So do you want your whole life to be without regret and to be pleasing to God and be blessed by God? So do you want your life to be pleasing to God, no regret? Do you say, wow, I live my life to the fullest? Even though God will forgive when we truly repent, our sins will bring destruction to us. Just like David, when he commit uh, murder and adultery, he, you know, swords will not be away from his family. So there will be destruction. When people have adultery, it will ruin their life, ruin their marriage, ruin everything. And then when a person continues sin, when he says he is repenting, it might not be a real repentance and he might not be safe. So if a person continues sin and, and says he repents, but he doesn't really repent, that it can be, you know, he might not have salvation if he, if he doesn't have real repentance. Now, we are not saved by doing good, but when we are saved then we'll change our life, then we have real repentance. When a person has zero real repentance, then there may be something wrong with his uh, spiritual life. Even some pastors and leaders can go to hell. I want to say that that is true. So I hope none of you will be going to hell. I hope that all of you are faithful in your life, are faithful in, follow, in following God and obeying God and not to tell lies. E, when we love and obey God, His blessings will exceed our imagination. Do you want that? So these are ways to challenge people. So this message, I hope it will be helpful to you to see how we can have warning messages also. But do not be, you know, do not have the whole message be a warning message. It should be a, mostly a grace message. Now, let me say this very briefly, this message, okay, very briefly. God will examine our hearts. Nothing is hidden from Him. And Jesus said, nothing that's hidden will not be revealed. And also, Paul said that his life will be a spectacle to the whole world, to all the angels and all, to all men. So this is a, uh, these are passages that talk about that our life will be exposed to the whole world. At the same time, God will reward us according to our deeds. If we are loving God and obeying God, uh, it will be, uh, God will see it and then God will reward us. Okay, first the grace part. The grace part is that it's God who moves us so that we'll obey Him. It's not us. We don't have the strength. It's God who forgives us, give us strength, give us the Holy Spirit to motivate us and give us the Word of God to motivate us and give us pastors and leaders and other Christians around us to be good witnesses around us to influence us so that we'll obey Him. So it's God who works in our life. The Holy Spirit moves in the heart so that we will obey Him. And then when we respond to Him, He will continue to bless us. Now, if we sin, He will remind us. And then if we repent right, right away, then we'll be blessed by God again. So even though sometimes we sin, when we repent, God is very happy.
but we don't want to continue sin because there are consequences of sin. So it's God who finishes what He st started in our lives. He started our spiritual life. He will finish it. He will bring it to complete completion to help us to live out our full Christian life so that we'll enjoy our life and God will reward us richly. But why do many Christians, they cannot live like that? Because they think that they can hide the sins. They think that it's still a long time from judgment. They think that, oh, I can enjoy the, uh, the sin, the pleasure of sin right now. So these are some lies that people believe. Now, there are warnings. If we don't repent, God sees us and He, will, he can punish us right away. And in the book of Acts, that Ananias and Sapphira, they were killed instantly by God. God can do that too. And God doesn't do that all the time because God gives us time. So we want to hear the warning of God. If we sin seriously, God can punish us right away. And we can lose our salvation. So that's the worst scenario. But when we truly repent, God will forgive us. But still there are consequences of sin. So we, we should be careful not to sin. So how? The awareness, very important, that it's like the ceiling and the walls are gone. God can see me and all the people can see me. God can see me now and all the people will see me in, on the day of judgment, that they will see my whole life. So nothing is hidden. So can we really live our life in a way that's pleasing to God and everyone that when we have a clear conscience, we'll be happy of what we have done for God, we'll be praising God, and we'll be rewarded by Him all the time. So I hope this will motivate us, first by the grace, because it's God who moves our heart so that we'll obey Him. So for every, every teaching we have, we think about what God does in order for us to obey Him, what God does. So in this case, it's God moves in the heart so that we obey Him. For evangelism is good, God give us the compassion so that we will want to do evangelism. And God has good examples of people who do evangelism around us to motivate us to do evangelism. And if it's um, loving people, because God puts love in our heart so that we'll love people. So this is very important. God puts the love in our heart so that we can love people. And God will reward us when we love people. So I hope you understand this and start to write sermons. And I, I'm happy to help you so that whatever you say will be encouraging to people. And people will say, God is working in my life. God is doing great things in my life. When I obey Him, He's very happy and He will bless me. And then I have full confidence my life will go higher and higher. So I hope you will have this kind of testimony among you. That you will love God and obey Him and share the gospel. And then you can see God's blessing coming to you again and again. And your life go higher and higher. And when you have this kind of testimony, please tell me. Tell me how your life improves after you obey God more and more. Okay, God bless you. And we'll conclude with a prayer. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. You are so wonderful. You work in our heart. To, you give us salvation and he, you send the Holy Spirit to move in our heart to change our life so that we love you more, you, we obey you more, we follow you more and serve you more. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And everything we do is not hidden. It's exposed to you and you'll be happy with everything we do for you and you'll bless us. Lord, help us to appreciate you and love you and, and glorify you all the time. Tell people about Jesus. Thank you. Give us strength and joy. Hallelujah.